I'm back. Hi, if you don't know me, I'm UDA. I'm Burb's intern, and I'm here to talk about women in pop culture and film. And obviously, we're going to start with In the City. Can't say that word on TikTok. <laughs> we're going to go through um, Carrie's relationship with Big. We're going to go through Miranda's relationship with Steve, Carrie and Miranda's friendship, just focusing on the topics that Burb usually talks about and breaking that down and how we can help other women by showing them things in film and having fun with it. So I hope you guys come along with me on this journey because I'm going to have super, so much fun. Sorry, super. I'm going to have so much fun going over this with you guys. I originally was going to call this series The Rise and Fall of Carrie and Mr. Big. But as I was rewatching and doing my little research, I was like, <laughs> it could not be called that because... The entire time, Big lets Carrie know that he's not serious about her, that this is not a serious relationship, and she just keeps running back. And you know this is a women-centered uh, channel and space, so I'm going to have to call it Don't Be a Carrie Bradshaw. And obviously, I was talking about my research earlier, so if you see me pulling out this book, you see me pulling out this notebook, that means this is serious work. That means this is, we're talking book here. You know what I mean? I got to pull out the, the receipts. Carrie Bradshaw represents everything that I don't want to see in a woman. <laughs> like if my homegirl came up to me and told me she was doing all this for a man or that she was letting a man do all this to her, I'd be like, yeah, we need to have a talk. We need to have a little sit down talk. Like you, you like, you're going to jump me if I say this, but I have to say it to you. Like I have to tell you, I'm so sorry to you. In fact, so let's get into it. I'm starting from the top season one. Uh, that's the it's actually the first episode that Carrie meets big so Carrie's doing a article for her column and she's like you know hooking up with men and having no feelings or that's what the column is for that week so she's coming from a hookup with this guy and as she's walking down the street she bumps into big like physically bumps into him and she spills all of the contents of her purse so when Carrie spills the contents of her purse, some condoms fall out. And a lot of people place a lot of emphasis on the condoms falling out, saying like, since that moment, Biggs never respects her. Since that moment, he's never taken her seriously. He thinks of her as this, this, and that. And I actually disagree with that. I think that before he, he just didn't care. Like he doesn't really see Carrie because I'll get into this later, but Carrie's not his type. She's just not the woman that he would go for. So he didn't care about the condoms because he's not really checking for her anyway. So later on, Carrie and Samantha go to this kind of social light party or whatnot. And Samantha points out Mr. Big. She's like, hey, this guy is the next Donald Trump, which, ew. Um, <laughs> she's like, he's the next Donald Trump. He is super rich, way more handsome than Donald or whatnot. And kind of is like talking him up about Carrie. And I guess she's pointing. So then Big comes up. He says hi to Carrie. Samantha's like, oh, do you know him or whatnot? And she's like, eh, not really. Like, they bumped into each other. They don't actually really know each other. So let's get into why Mr. Big is called Mr. Big. And here's Big himself. He's played by Chris Naw, um, alongside Sarah Jessica as her main love interest for, like, six seasons. And then they go on to get married. So he's a big, he's part of the show. Um... He's called Mr. Big because he's supposed to represent everything Manhattan. He's supposed to be big, fast. He's grand. You know, he's rich. He can buy a lot of expensive things. He can drop a bag easily. Like one time Carrie goes to him because she needs, um, sorry, I knocked over my water bottle because <laughs> she needs money because she can't um, afford her apartment anymore. And he gives her $30,000. Like we don't know how much money he makes, but we know that he can drop a bag like that. Ms. Bradshaw over here describes him as major tycoon major dreamboat and majorly out of my league okay carisha we cannot do this right now do not do this ladies when i'm telling you do not put on a pedestal do not put him on a pedestal and be like oh he's so much better than me even if you don't say it to his face if you think that he's better than you he's gonna think he's better than you and now what now you set uh, you set the relationship at least this is what i think i think you've set the relationship up for failure because now he thinks that he's better than you he thinks that he's hot i don't know if i can swear on youtube so you know i'm censoring myself but 
I just would never do that. And you shouldn't either. Like you should live, um, by Carrie live from her mistakes or she doesn't even think they're mistakes, but the stuff that she does on the show, especially for big is insane. When this man is giving her time, like every time he's like, I don't want to be in a relationship with you. I don't want you leaving stuff at my house. And she just keeps coming back for more. Why? Keep in mind, this is all the same night. This is all the same episode um, where Samantha calls him Donald Trump. She's bumped into him. She dropped her condoms. This is all the same night. So Carrie leaves the party that night and she's searching for a cab. She can't find one. No cabs around, right? So she's like, oh, I might have to walk home. And who appears in the middle of the night? Mr. Big. Through the mystery, he comes, you know what I mean? He saves her. Um, <laughs> so she gets into the car and obviously he's like, well, we're going to be in a car ride together. So he, you know, he starts to talk to her a little bit like, Hey, what do you do for work? You know, I bumped into you twice today. And she says, I write a column and he goes, Oh, like a hooker. Crazy work, crazy work. I know. And then she's like, no, I just like write a column about, uh, women and men and their relationships. And sometimes so, but then she says something else crazy. Like, uh, you can think of me as an actual anthropologist. Homegirl, what? This is a crazy thing for Carrie to say because throughout all the seasons and throughout all the movies, like even on, I think it's, is it season six where she's with Alexander, the Russian? She's with him and she's like, I want someone who can commit to me. I want someone who can love me brazenly, love me loud and all this stuff. And like, I don't want to just like be running around sleeping around and not that there's anything wrong with that but you know that's just not what carrie wants that's never what she's wanted that's never the person that she's been that's kind of like samantha's whole thing but carrie so a lot of people when they do their analysis you know i've listened to mel hamlet i've listened to cecilia i think it's regine or regina i sorry i can't remember i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing it wrong um but i listen to a lot of um you know pop culture breakdowns and analysis and all that stuff and mine is a little bit different because i do you think that big likes Carrie? Um, I don't think of him as a narcissist, actually. I just think that Carrie is not big's type, you know, socially, um, physically, but emotionally, I do think that they're each other's type. They, um, fit together in that way, but to big, that doesn't matter because, you know, he's a bachelor, he's a socialite, like he comes, he has big money and he has a reputation to uphold and Carrie doesn't fit that reputation so Carrie and Big keep running into each other Carrie's kind of anxious and like intrigued by him she's like oh when is he gonna ask me out like I keep seeing him and he's not doing anything and I think that it's because he doesn't really care to like he's just not like I don't even think he was very intrigued by her when they first bumped into each other even though like she was like oh my god like she thought it was like love at first sight and he was like oh okay this is a pretty lady but not my type, you know what I mean? Like he's just, he's not feeling her. So they finally decide to hang out together and he doesn't even call, it wasn't even a date. He said, uh, let's go for a drink thing. That's what he says. And they're supposed to go for a drink thing. And I guess he showed up there early and he could only be there for an hour or whatnot. But Carrie thinks he like bails on him. So the next time he actually calls her up and he says, Hey, let's actually go on a date. So they go on a date to this actually pretty nice restaurant. And Carrie gets there and Big's friend is there sitting there. And she's like, what's this guy doing here? I thought we we're on a date. And he's like, I'm so sorry. He ha was having a hard night. So I asked him to come along. And I'm just like, I don't know. To me, I was like, that's a little weird. Like if it was truly a date, why would you bring another person along? Like, why wouldn't you just cancel and then reschedule? But maybe, I don't know. He's Mr. Big. I, I don't know anything about him. I'm sorry to that man. In fact, yeah. So because of this, um, Carrie thinks that he's trying to make it up to her. And I can see how it kind of looks like that. Uh, he asked her out on kind of like a do-over date. And if you guys ever seen the show, this is where she wears like the naked dress. It's this nude dress that looks like it's like silk. It's very pretty. Um, and she wears it for her like photo shoot when she's doing her column. I thought I would just pull up the dress and show you guys. Doesn't she look really cute? I think this dress is super pretty. I think she looks really good in it. So Carrie is obviously going like all out for the state. She like wears a nice dress. She looks good. She sells her makeup or whatnot. And Big is wearing a suit because, you know, he's big and he always wears suits. 
but he takes her to this restaurant and she's like huh like she doesn't realize it at first but she catches okay sorry um i only have a few more seconds so like and follow and subscribe for part two Hi, I'm Yudi. I'm here with the Bourbon Bougie team. I'm here to talk about women and pop culture and film. This series is called Don't Be a Carrie Bradshaw. And I already did a part one. So this is part two. And where we left off, we were at uh, Carrie and Big had their first date at this Chinese restaurant. So before Carrie sits down, she sees a friend of hers. She goes over there to talk to him a little bit. And he's on a date with somebody. But instead of the friend introducing his date, he doesn't say anything. He just says, hi, how are you? And then Carrie has to introduce herself to the date. Um, later on, when Carrie asks, or she, she asks her friend, hey, why didn't you introduce your friend to me? And he's like, you know, I love her a lot and all these things, but she's just not the one for me. She's not the girl for me. And he would never take her out. Sorry, I just cracked my knuckle. <laughs> he would never take her out in public. He wouldn't introduce her to his friends. Um, he wouldn't take her out on a proper date. They met at like the grocery store and he just didn't think that she was a woman of social status that he wanted to be associated with. So Carrie starts to kind of like her brain starts ticking and she's like, why would he do that? And he starts thinking, she starts thinking that she is that embarrassing girl for big. And it's not even like thinking anymore. She is that embarrassing girl for big. And this relationship dynamic is developed pretty early on because they go on their first date within um, I think the first three episodes. So we meet, um, Carrie and Big meet each other and then they go on their date and their relationship dynamic has already um, been established at this point. So the seed has already been planted that Big is embarrassed by Carrie. And then the next couple of scenes we see Big meets a friend on the street and instead of introducing Carrie, he doesn't. And he makes an excuse about not knowing the friend's name or whatnot but so I do empathize with Carrie a little bit because you know she does really like big and he seems like this grand guy and she wants to be in a relationship with him and if you feel like a man isn't taking you seriously you know that's going to hurt your feelings my problem that I do have with Carrie is that she does want an exclusive relationship she does want um, flowers and to be romanced but instead of Carrie telling Big this, she kind of just like will get mad and act like a child. And then Big himself too, he kind of in a way leads her on. So they have this kind of, I always call it like the Tom and Jerry dynamic where, you know, they're kind of always chasing and running and chasing each other and they can't find anything better than, do, than to run and chase each other and run around and keep doing the same patterns over and over again instead of evolving and progressing yourself. Going back to what I said in part one, um, Carrie puts Big on this pedestal. I mean, she calls him Mr. Big. This man, we don't know his real name. He's called Mr. Big. That That isn't his last name. She just calls him that. And she's already put him on this pedestal that he's better than you. She she already said it. So I don't understand why she's so confused and why she's like running around town being like, he's embarrassed of me. Of course he is. You already put it in your mind that he's better than you. And now he thinks that he is better than you. So what now? Now we both look dumb. Now we both look dumb. So because of all the feelings that Carrie is having uh, about the relationship and about Big being embarrassed of her, she goes over to his house and confronts him. But Carrie does not go over to his house as a adult woman. She goes over there super, super drunk and is like very abrasive, very aggressive. And she goes into this whole rant about how like, she has to be perfect for him or whatnot. And one, he actually never said that. He's never told Carrie that she has to be perfect for him. She just kind of has this idea of what a relationship is supposed to be in her head. And when it doesn't fit that, she can be quite destructive. And we'll see that later on in the other seasons. But so she's over at his house yelling and drunk and, you know, big calms her down. He's like, I didn't introduce you to that guy because I can't remember his name. And I only took you to Feng Hua, which is the Chinese restaurant they went to because I think they have the best Chinese food in the entire city and whatnot. And this is where we see Big's toxicity come through. I think a lot of the times people um, will say it's all Carrie, it's all Carrie. I do think that Big is very toxic. 
um he lies and that was one thing he just did to her he lied about not knowing the friend's name or whatnot and not introducing when these were very obvious clear signs that he just doesn't really like her that much but i think he likes to keep carrie in her his company i think he likes to have someone doting on him and somebody that is wrapped around his finger at all times and i think that's why he keeps her around um in season one and in season two i do think in the later season he does begin to love her even though she's not his ideal woman she's not his type you know big's type is a bra a tall brunette sophisticated woman maybe she comes from old money maybe he does she does a job that big thinks to be respectable so she, she could be a model she could be a um children's book writer like his ex-wife a good example of big's type is charlotte you know charlotte comes from a nice family she's looking for marriage to settle down she is okay with being a homemaker a housewife that is what he is looking for he just doesn't find that in carrie and there's nothing wrong with carrie there's nothing wrong with being fun quirky blonde you know i think everybody is unique in their own way and you know that's what makes us humans and that's what makes us like other people because people are different and it's a good thing to be celebrated but if he's just not feeling you and he doesn't like you like that why keep coming back or like so we're still at big's house and carrie's yelling at him telling him all the things that she doesn't like that he does and you know he's sweet talking her and saying like i'm sorry or whatnot and then carrie asks like after they make up she says is this a thing you and i this man responds to her could be carrie takes that she takes that to be like they're in a relationship and that's fine Every, everything that he's done prior she's like oh it's okay I think this is a really important conversation or like dynamic that Big and Carrie have throughout the series where Big will apologize for things, but he will never ever take action to actually change those behaviors or to become a better partner. And anytime he just sweet talks Carrie and he says he's sorry, Carrie accepts it from him every single time. And I'm not saying that you can't give people second chances, but when the second chance comes with no action, don't give them a third chance. This is a thing we see with Big and Carrie so often because Carrie accepts the bare minimum from Big every time. And Big knows that she's going to accept the bare minimum. That's why he continues to do the things that she doesn't like. But as long as he apologizes for it, then they're good and they're back on good terms. And I think that is a thing that happens to a lot of women. I find Sex and the City to be a very relatable show because... People are like, oh, who, who could be in a situation for 15 years? But we've seen different Reddit stories on Burb's account. We've seen stories of women that have come out and talked about and shared their story. So as much as I make jokes and I'm kind of dogging on Carrie right now and getting at her, I want her to be a cautionary tale. I am using her to be like, hey, look, don't be like Carrie Bradshaw. So after Carrie asks if they're going to be a thing or whatnot, he said, could be after that they start hanging out for two weeks straight carrie thinks they're going steady they she stops talking to her friends you know she's always over at big's place um one day charlotte calls her up and she's like you have to go out with us you haven't gone out with us in weeks because you're always at big's so the, all four of the girls go out they have a nice little, little dinner and um as they're leaving the dinner carrie sees big over in the corner and she goes up to him and she's like hey and she realizes that it's not a business dinner and that he's on a date. So she asks him, she's like, are you on a date? And he's like, yeah, sort of. And she's like, you told me you had a business thing. So already there, they're on very different pages of the relationship. She thinks that they're exclusive and they are not exclusive. Um, well, Carrie never tells Big that she actually wants to be exclusive with him. Instead of her saying, hey, I don't want to be monogamous with other people. She doesn't say that she storms off and she tells all her girlfriends oh he sucks he's this he's that and i'm like not to give men grace but like you didn't tell him that you wanted to be exclusive and you could say the is this a thing you and i and he said could be if i asked a question like that and you said could be i'd be like could be what could be monogamous right could be exclusive but carrie did not say that carrie's not going to say that because you know she's carisha she's carrie she's not going to say that miss little pick me Aisha. she's not going to say that no this was part two of Don't Be a Carrie Bradshaw. Like, follow, and subscribe. Share for more.
so my light died and then my mic died and I was like oh it's getting weird they're trying to silence me I don't know I don't know I don't know um but let's get into it this is part three of don't be a Carrie Bradshaw we left off talking about how um Carrie wants to be exclusive and Big doesn't want that but Carrie cannot use her words and tell Big that she wants to be exclusive and what I'm about to tell you guys <laughs> it's not funny I need to be serious this is a serious this is a serious topic even though I'm very unserious I it's a serious topic given to you by an unserious person later Carrie and Big go to this party for some reason they're always going to parties like I mean I know that Big is like this finance bro or whatnot and he has all this money but like Carrie does not have money and she's going to all these parties all the time and like but I guess that's her job to like study relationship with, with women and men so of course she's got to be out and about you feel so they're at this party and Carrie is super she's big mad she's stomping her feet um and big is like what's wrong what what's wrong she will not tell him so she leaves the party without telling him she goes to hang out with Stanford at like this other event um she meets up with this young guy they're kind of clicking they're talking and while she's like talking to this guy big calls her up and he's like um hey why did you leave I've been looking for you what's going on and then Carrie's like, yeah, whatever, just come over here. So he finally gets, Big and Carrie finally meet up. They find each other at this second party that they went to. And Carrie asks him if he wants to be exclusive. First of all, why are you asking him that? You want to be exclusive, so just tell him you want to be exclusive. Why are you asking him? Like, obviously it's his decision too, but if he doesn't want to be exclusive, then break up with him and go find someone who wants to be exclusive. I don't understand this woman, but you know. She asks him um, if he wants to be exclusive. And let me tell you what he does. This is so, I'm sorry. <laughs> he wraps an arm around her. That's all he does. He doesn't say a single word. He just wraps an arm around her. And they walk off into the night. And Carrie's like, oh my God, we're exclusive now. Ladies and gentlemen, the bar is in hell. It's in hell, I fear. Yeah. Yeah like what i'm speechless do you see me do you hear me this man would go into the kitchen boil her hot dog water and propose to her with it and she would accept it he he said nothing to you he gave you nothing he made no noise there's no standing ovation there's nothing he thought he ate the the plate is full all the crumbs are on the plate everything is there even the bone is still on the plate he did not even chew I, I'm sorry. I keep pausing because I, I have to. I mean, this is so unserious. This cannot be real. Like, they actually put this into a TV show. Like, and there's a reason I only have Carrie up here. This woman, this, this woman, you see her? Set feminism back 100 years. I swear to God. I wouldn't tell you a lie. Would I lie to you? No. If you've ever been negatively affected by a situationship, you may be entitled to financial compensation because of this woman yes correct Carrie Bradshaw yeah I didn't add this in the other parts but I meant to because I think it's quite important so big is 41 in season one and Carrie is 33 in season one so he's a little bit older than her um, and I didn't add their ages because of their age gap I added it because Burb often talks about people's baseline and I wanted to talk about that with uh, their dynamic I think that Carrie behaves this way because of maybe a trauma or maybe an attachment style that she developed from her childhood. Um, maybe her parents were absent in her life and it gave her an anxious attachment style or, you know, made her think that it's okay to accept less and okay to accept the bare minimum when it comes to love and relationships. And then Big, obviously, he's very non-committal, like and he's only committal when it benefits him and his social status. We'll see that later on in season three when he marries Natasha. This will be important um, later as I'm about to get into the next part of where the series leads us. I gotta hurry up before the mic and the light dies again because it tried to play my face, you know, like big plate and carries, but we can't let that happen. So I'm gonna get you this part three and we're gonna post it soon enough. Um, so the next part of the story uh carrie's working on an article for her column of course and she is like running around manhattan 
and she stops for a little bit. She stops by this church. She's looking at the church and the church goers and all of a sudden she sees Big and his mother. And so that intrigues her a little bit. She's like, oh, I didn't know you went to church and whatnot. So they are eating like takeout at Carrie's house or I think they're at Big's house because um, Big never comes to Carrie's house until maybe a little bit into the, lo the other half of season two. Um, but they're eating and Carrie's like, hey, I want to come to church with you and your mother. Like, you know, saying I want to meet your mother. And Big says this to her, I didn't think of you as the church going type. Oh, what Mr. Big is really trying to say is I never thought of you as the bring you home to mother type. But of course, he's not going to say that because Big wants to keep Carrie in his proximity. He wants to keep her close by, even if he's not going to bring her to meet his mother, even if he doesn't think that she's a sophisticated brunette that he would settle down with. He still, of course, wants Carrie for all her um, amenities that she gives him. Later in season four, Big says to Carrie when, I can't remember, I think Aiden proposes to her, and Big says to Carrie, oh honey, you're not the marrying kind. And I think that's so telling. When a man tells you what he thinks about you, how he sees you, especially if it's negative, especially like, because if it's positive, he can be lying. But if it's negative, he's not lying to you. You know what I mean? He is telling you how he sees it. And Big does that a couple of times with Carrie and she just kind of like, is like, oh, whatever. But he tells you that you're not the marrying kind. Then he goes and he gets married to another woman. Also, he leaves her at the altar. Like, um, first movie. Yeah. Sorry. It's not really spoilers because this has been out for like 10 years, but you get what I'm saying. Big cannot offer Carrie the kind of relationship that she wants because Big will never take her seriously. Instead, Mr. Big offers Carrie a trip to St. Bart's. He's like, hey, you can't meet my mother, but let's go on vacation. Let's go to St. Bart's. And of course, because Carrie is Carrie, she does not take that answer. She drives Miranda along with her and they go down to the church. You know, they wear their nice little hats and whatnot. And as they're like about to be seated in the church, Carrie accidentally drops her Bible and it's like a big smack on the floor everyone hears it big looks up and he's like uh hello i just told you you could not come to church with me and my mother so now that carrie has been spotted at the church she has to stay and of course say hi to big and his mother so afterwards um she goes up to big and his mother and we find out or we discover that Big has not talked to his mother about Carrie, but obviously the audience knew that because Big has not given her any sign that he is ready for, at least with her, a real commitment in our relationship that will progress. You guys ever seen that video going around on TikTok where the woman's talking about how Beyonce is not Jay-Z's dream girl? I saved that video, but I never got to actually watch it. And I feel like that is the situation with Carrie and Big. Like, Carrie is not Big's dream girl. She's not, you know, the one you bring home to mommy. She's not the church going girl. And he has told her this. But, you know, Carrie just is like, I don't know if she likes the color red and red flags are all over Big. So she's like coming back to him. I don't understand what's happening. So Carrie is a wreck because Big says, My mother doesn't need to meet another girlfriend saying that she's just another girlfriend in the batch she's not again once again just like confirming what we already know um so it's the end of the season now and before they go on the state bar trips carrie's like i need a sign i need you to tell me that i'm the one and big is like okay he doesn't say it obviously he doesn't say it but he just like doesn't say anything to her so they break up